All right, here we are. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Um, I'm a little tired, to be honest. Uh, whew. I'm here at the hotel. We're not fully integrated into RV living yet, so... <sighs> It's funny, I had a really good day yesterday. I was able to get some work done. And then today I was so drained and so tired. I spent the whole day in bed. Um, if you guys hear sounds in the background, I'm in the room with my daughters. They're doing each other's hair, they're having their... But one of my baby girls is tenderheaded, so if you hear any like, ah, ooh, ah, uh, that's what's going on in the background, some braids. Um, Yeah, so I had a really great day. I was able to upload some burlesque content, um, introduce a new part of my act that I've been sitting on and <laughs> literally sitting on. Um, it's so many changes going on within me that I don't always know how to talk about them. And I don't always know how to like integrate them into my day-to-day. -day. So I'll have like what I consider a bunch of mini tower moments, like breakdowns and meltdowns. <laughs> and today I just slept. I didn't have a breakdown after doing the work yesterday. I just had like, I think I was tired because I think I spent a lot of time maybe like being hard on myself about it. And also so much time denying myself from what I really wanted to do. And so by the time I did it, it was like, oh, God, finally. And I realized that I deny myself so much. That's what the good sleep that I had today, kind of when I woke up, I always have like, if I sleep very deeply, I wake up with like a, a sense of clarity, if you will. And so I felt as soon as I woke up, I wanted some Timbuktu, some African food, I did get that. <laughs> um, so we have some. I ha I de they didn't get the, the Igusi soup is not on the menu yet for like DoorDash where I'm at. But they have some other stuff. So I got jollof rice. I got um, some fufu, plantain fufu. Um, fufu. Got to say fufu. The plantain fufu. And I got some. Um, it's jollof rice. With some type of beef with onions. It looks like roasted, kind of like pan seared a little bit. Um, it don't have no sauce. And some cabbage on the side with some plantains. And the other thing that could come with the fufu is a beef soup with okra added. But it's not igusi. It's, it's the one that's red that has... It's a different version. So I'm excited to taste that. Um, so I, yeah, I got up and I went to bed like after work and everything. I want to say I came in, it would have been about 10 ish, 10, 10 30 ish. And uh, I woke up like just now, <laughs> like maybe five something, five, four, four thirty ish, four, four, four thirty ish, between four and five. And um, I have a lot on my mind, I'm, I have a lot on my plates, as they say. And I don't think that makes me different from anyone else. I think what makes me different from anyone else is that it's my story. It's what I have on my plate because it's me and my plate. So that's different from the next man or woman with a plate. So it's just that simple. And I'm learning how to like make space for myself in that way. And I don't think I have in the past. I was speaking to a friend about life and stuff and... She was basically like, you are a victim. You've been a victim. And it's funny because I resisted. And I was like, nah, I'm, I'm not a victim. I ain't. But I have been victimized, which means I have been a victim, which means that I am a victim, which means that victimhood lives in me just as much as it does not. Okay, now that I got all the spiritual, what I call mumbo jumbo, out the place so that I don't have dissent in the mind, um, I feel better. I can move forward <laughs> with what I'm saying. You know, so with that being said, embracing more of my victim side instead of shunning her and calling her weak 
and feeling like you don't have no value because all you do is fold anyway. But I think that's kind of a misrepresentation of victim energy the more I sit with it. Because the victim is the one that deals with the abuse and still will have you in the situation. Meaning giving you what you want. You know what I'm saying? And that that victim ego is all about what you want. It's it's not like about self-sacrifice in the name of the good of the situation as much as it is self-sacrifice in the name of what you think you want, what you want. If that, you know, if that's how it's coming to me. That's how I'm thinking about it. That's how I've been seeing it for months. And today is the day that I'm thinking about that because I uploaded a one minute video that took my whole soul and months to like really just get out and it was like I'm an actress I'm a performance art artist I am a multimedia artist I you know all these titles are things I can do and I can be jobs I can get done I'm a director I'm a creative director you know I'm a creative project manager all these things that I could do but I help other people and I'm helping them get it done but I ain't really doing it for myself. And there was so much blocks there as far as how I really felt about myself. Like, you know, I'm working with another artist and I want them to win. I want them to get it. I want them to express themselves. I see the value. But then with me, it's like I wasn't even asking the right people for help. Sometimes I didn't even ask for help. But now that I have a lot more understanding of the knowledge I have for myself because I can, now I can like, I want to use a complete sentence with that statement. Now that I have more wisdom about who I am, I really am enjoying being myself. And I want to not be afraid to enjoy myself being myself. And I think there's something that I have not put into place, which is what does this cost me? And I'm thinking about that upon waking up. And I realize it cost me like, it cost me not dealing with things that are not healthy for me. It cost me to require a valid friendships where it's not a blame game or like, you know, who's, who's, who's the best, who's the most correct, who's the most compassionate. It's more like we feeling each other, we digging each other, we care about each other. I'm I'm requiring so much care because I have been a victim. I deserve to be treated in a way that does not put me in situations where I'm a victim. It's not a place, that's not a lesson plan lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't go through the victim lessons your whole lifestyle. You will die at some point or be in a crazy house. You will self-destruct. That's what's at the end of the victim program. Destruction of self. Self-destruction, whether it be from someone killing you, you killing you. That made me think of that movie Acrimony by Tyler Perry and how that girl could not get a hold of her. Now, it's not to say people around her wasn't doing um horrible things or wasn't victimizing her or lying to her or mistreating her. It wasn't that. It was more so like she wasn't processing it in a way that was helping her and helping them by way of her helping herself. Because I feel like if we all be really good and help ourselves, it makes the world, to me, what the world should be, whatever that is. If we're all really focused on our, I don't want to say highest good because that I don't like to polarize highest versus lower. It's all the same. Energy cannot be added to or taken away from. Like I like to keep it real basic. To me, spirituality don't have to be like, hoo ha. Because the part that's all, hoo ha. When it happened, usually you by yourself or with a small group of people, people, and the shit be so spooky, you don't really talk about it with nobody because you cannot believe with your own eyes and ears and experience what the f- just happened. So you don't have to fake the, ooh, ah. You don't have to fake that part of spirituality. It comes. Trust me, it's there. And when it's there, you like less of that, please. So with all that being said, I want to be more intentional with my relationships because I like to treat people good, but I like to be treated good too. And when good people show up and they treated me good, 
I want to have the energy and I want to have the know-how to treat them good because that's what I want, good treatment. Beneficial treatment, business partnerships, where we make a money, where we live in our life, where we, you know, not codependency, not like secret competition. Like, I like competition. I do. So to have a, a work buddy, I can be like, yo, I got this, you got this, let's run it. Let's see who, let's see whoever don't get the numbers got to buy the next person like their favorite shoe or some dinner or sing a song on my TikTok, something like that. You never know. Like just having fun as friends and using um using goals and objectives as ways to really motivate and push each other. Like I'm about that type of stuff. That's what my ideal relationships include. So even my romantic relationships, like I don't like relationships where we're not growing together, where we're not active, where we're not taking adventures. Like, I want to take adventures. I want to do stuff that's adventurous. I want to be on the adventure of life, no matter what's happening. That's how I am. And I want to share that with people who could relate to that. And that's, that's that. It feels good to even think about it and talk about it. So the victim allows me to know this because... Without victim knowledge of self, you don't know what non-victim knowledge of self could look like. Meaning, I don't like that. I believe that um, we hear these types of lessons with law of attraction. And we don't think about... we and, and the word contrast is used in that language with law of attraction. So... it's It's all law of attraction. But we like to think that one person or a group of people coined that... It's 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 a is. If it's a law, if it's a natural law, a universal law, it's a is. That again, that's how I like to think about it. It's a is, meaning that's is what's gonna happen. <laughs> that is what is happening. And there's no way it it's not gonna happen. It's it's always happening. As long as it's happening. It's real simple to me. So with that being said, I've learned how to, when I started I'll put it this way. When I started, when I was in therapy, I did cognitive therapy. I had the best doctor, like, ooh, anywho. She was the best doctor for me because when I told her, hey, I'm in here. I don't want to sit here and talk shit about my mother. I don't want to go on and on about my mother. And I also don't want to take drugs. I don't want to be on any psych. Theatric. I don't want to do that. I don't want drugs. I don't want my mind and my inner body to be... I, like, I already... When I started therapy, I was 24. I had some therapy before that, little bits and spurts, counseling sessions, but consistent therapy for about two years. Um, And then after that, a year and then frequently after that, definitely frequently. And then for about six months to a year after, like I have therapy, like I go to therapy now. That's a regular, you know how people go to the spa? I go to therapy. <laughs> I take my children to therapy. Like that's something we do for like, mm, this human journey is a little bit tough. Let's do some therapy. Let's make sure. And what I learned about cognitive therapy, which is my preferred type of therapy and maybe sometimes some good talk therapy. Um, what I learned was how to repave my roads. So I have certain exercises, certain mental processes, which I can go through, which will help me from re-damaging my roads, roads, my mental roads, my mind. I know how to repave it if something should get a little tough, you know? I know, I know certain things because I went to therapy. Um, I grew up in a way that, I grew up in a cult, and I grew up in a very, like, um, a household that was a little bit, like, emotionally not the best household for me. Um, lots of unprocessed trauma and abuse. And I was someone who was, like, already at a very young age into processing things and, like, dealing with stuff directly as a child. <laughs> I wasn't bad. I was just very, like, directly sweet and interested, if that makes sense. Um, I was a little more quiet, I was told. But in my mind, I was very much not quiet. I was very much alert. 
just not sure how to express because even then I had a knowing of things and I'm like, if I say this, I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a spanking or they're gonna shut me down some kind of way. They're gonna try to shut me down. So I ain't gonna say it. So when I was younger, I was called quiet a lot. I sucked my thumb. I was always had my head in a book or dancing. Like that's the two things. Head in a book, eating, dancing. Being outside. If there was a pool or some water, I was gonna be in that body of water until someone had to drag me out. I've always been an active child, even though I was a chubby child. You know, I grew up chubby or big body, whatever you want to call it. Thick. I don't know how you describe that, but it didn't stop me from moving or wanting to move my body. So, so and I say all that to say, like, I've had a good awareness of myself my whole life, and I've had a good awareness of others. But I didn't have an awareness of my life, most of my, you know, growing up, my developmental life and young teenage and even young adult life before therapy, I didn't have an idea of how valuable I was to myself. I didn't have um, an idea of how special I am, how worthy I am. Um, now I have those ideas in place and that knowledge in place and how to grow and expand and live in that space of self-awareness. But Again, these are things that being a victim taught me because being a victim is what got me to go to therapy. That victimhood, somebody putting their hands on me, someone controlling me financially, someone controlling me mentally, um, harming me emotionally, neglecting me emotionally, emotionally, neglecting me mentally when I was supposed to be in a situation where I could depend on them, where I had no choice but to depend on them. Yeah, I'm very thankful for my friend. Um, she's a profound person, and um, I care about her a lot. And she's a new friend. I'll be honest, you know how we have the whole thing, no new friends. I'm glad I don't believe in that because if I believed that, I probably wouldn't have opened up to her. So with her expressing to me sometimes things that are hard to hear and holding me accountable to my bullshit, make sure you have friends around you that be like, that sounds stupid what you're saying. <laughs> And then y'all can come back from that. And not that they're abusing you. Not that they're calling you stupid. They're saying this idea is one that is going to make you feel stupid later on. Like they know you. It's good to have people around you that know you. Because in a world where we're all going through several different types of consistent programming and traumas. Like it's we're being traumatized by seeing certain videos on the internet or TV, movies. The air quality, the water quality, it's certain things that are always happening in the realm of Earth, especially within the United States of America, that can be seen as like really like, oh God, you know, so we're all going through it and pollution, you know, come on, let's, let's just keep some shit real, keep it real basic, keep it simple. Again, I like to keep it simple. We ain't got to go all in the, you know, I mean, we know it's a lot of terrible things happening that don't have to be happening. But these necessary evils are happening, even if just for us to pay attention to that this is happening. And that if we would like to add a change in the um, matrix, in the programming, master programming, <clears throat> we could do that. I've been drinking lemon water today. I haven't been having much water since we've been in the hotel, which is weird. Like, I just was, like, on some, like, no water shit. Like, I really did not have water for, like, two, three days. I don't even know what that's about. So now I'm having some. I've been having lemon water today. Getting back in my water flow because I felt it in my skin. I was like, I need some water. Um, Even just missing the taste of water. Like, I needed some water. And so I had some lemon water, which is my favorite type of water. But then I like sorrow water, too, or what y'all call hibiscus water. And I had ordered some Bissap, Bissap, I hope I'm saying it right, juice from the African spot. But for the last few days, the DoorDash people been like, y'all, I don't know what's up with DoorDash. Like, and then, so you tell it, Door, let, me, let me, let me do a side post real quick. So DoorDash, you're telling me that if my order keep getting messed up, y'all going to tell me, oh, because you've been having so many issues, we can't do nothing about this issue. But the issue is not. I didn't create the issue. I mean, maybe I did because I ordered with y'all service. Maybe I need to try another service, DoorDash. 
missing stuff. And I feel like if I paid for something, I don't really want the money back. I want y'all to go get my stuff. Bring it back for me. I don't like substitutes, and I don't want my money back. I wanted my Bissop juice. I love the way that um, African culture does sorrel or hibiscus tea. It tastes like Jolly Rancher candy juice. Like, I want more of that. And it's a healthy drink. Maybe, you know, with the white sugar, it ain't the best healthy, but I got to get their recipe and figure this out. Cause So anyway, my point is, it's not lemon water in my cup. It's hibiscus. I take my hibiscus uh, flower leaf everywhere I go because you never know when you need to do a little, like, let me clear this shit out right quick internally so I can clear it out externally. I keep it simple. Um, I keep my spirituality simple. Um, so... I had to run use the um the coffee maker for the water. And I think it was like a loose coffee in there. So it has a slight coffee taste. It's not bad. It's not delicious. It could be great. Maybe a little sugar, it would actually be great. But I don't do a lot of sugar. Like white sugar makes my stomach hurt. It don't make me break out, but it definitely makes my stomach hurt really bad. Like, in a very bad way. I don't even get the shits or nothing. I just get this cramping-ass stomach, which I hate. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Um, it also makes me dry in my body. When I do too much sugar in everywhere, like my eyes, my mouth, I get, I get dry. I don't like that. I like to be juicy. <laughs> juicy is my preferred state of being. So, yeah. So, with me having all this self-knowledge at a young age... But not having the wisdom of application of self-knowledge, which I'm now getting and sleeping all day. I realize I haven't been being good with myself. And part of part of being good with myself is giving myself the outlets that I need and 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 sitting comfortably with who I am. I I am a performance artist. And I noticed that most of the one woman material that I create <clears throat> Most of what I privately make in my own, all the journals I have, all the um, screenplays I have, all the synopsis I have for plays, all the plays I've written privately. I've been writing poetry since I was in elementary school and I've been published in my school um, papers and stuff like that. Like, you know, things like that. I ain't been published like nowhere, like, you know, <laughs> but I've been doing my thing as a performance artist, as a entertainer, even if you will, as a as a jester of the court for a minute, for a minute. I'm 40 now. I have a 22 year old and a 15 year old. They'll be 22 and 15 in April. So I've been grown for a minute and I've been performing for a minute, like my whole life. I've been enjoying um, making people feel good. Making people have ideas, making people be inspired, making people feel like they can. You know, I love that. I love one of my favorite things about being a performer is like when you get like, especially in theater, when you get to the venue and you see the stage for the first time. Oh, my God. I'm the kind of person I'd be like, I got to go make love to the stage. I have to go make oh. I have I, <laughs> I merge with the stage. I got to go like. I got to go do intercourse with the stage. And how I do that is a very simple process of just introducing myself and, and speaking to my intention on that um, intentional space, which is a stage. I love what we do as performance artists. I love other musicians, dancers, actors. I'm a painter. I do a lot of things, and I enjoy the things I do. But then sometimes I don't feel I'm worthy to do them and I won't. And then I'll be backed up. You know what it is to be like creatively backed up? I don't even be creatively constipated because, you know, constipation is when you want to go and you can't. Well, yeah, I guess I'll be constipated and backed up then. Shit. <laughs> so yesterday made me like really it was I was so nervous to do that video. And I want to give a shout out. To my homeboy, Demetrio, a.k.a. Micho Productions, a.k.a. Micho Promotions. Like, he helped me edit the video. He helped me He helped me to make it be, get it done. He helped me to believe myself. I'm not going to cry. I am not going to cry. 
I need that in my friendships. I want that in my friendships. I have a unique situation where I was raised in some bullshit. Let's just keep it real. That doesn't support who I really am. So I have to work through things. I have to go through emotional ups and downs that most women might only experience in their cycle during their PMS time or, you know, or maybe not even ever. I go through a lot of cycles of emotions, a lot of ups and downs, and I need people around me who who understand this and who don't take this as a personal um, affront to them. Take my moodiness as something like I'm doing something to them. Because I'm not. And if I am, I own it and I can say that I am. That's why, you know, I, I, I'm working on not even ghosting. I've been calling people. I'm that I'm I have a lot of friends. I realize I have more friends than I give credit to. And I realize that when it's time to call everybody, <laughs> I could get in a space where I'm like, I have no one. No one's here. I'm alone. I'm so alone. <laughs> right? I can get there. But then I have a feeling like I wanna talk to people that I love. I wanna connect. And I'm like, dang, there's a lot of them. <laughs> I want to talk to people I connect with and people who connect with me. And I be like, ooh, that's a lot of phone calls to make in one night. Yeah, me. You know, but, but the worst thing to do is make that phone call. And no matter, you know, what's going on is that you get rejected or you be like told that you, you know, it don't feel good. And then you're just like, so I'm supposed to work through this now? And you don't even... And what to me, the thing is like when they don't know that there's an issue, that's the issue for me. Because that means you're not tapped in emotionally. I need that. Because I be tapped in emotionally. You know what I'm saying? And I used to do that for the wrong reasons. You know, trauma bonding bullshit. But now it's like, nah, I want the good... I've been, I'm experiencing some good stuff. You know, we friends, but I never hear from you. I'm always calling you. You never call me. I'm done with those one-sided um, um, friendships and and relationships. I can't do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do the fake friends thing. I don't like. I don't want to watch you be fake with other people and then think you being real with me. I don't want that no more. I don't. I don't want to be that way no more. I don't want to be ways that are not good to myself because when it's time to create. You know, I don't feel like I can. I don't feel good. I don't feel worthy. I got to work with the integrity that I actually work with. And it's a lot. I got a lot of integrity. I have a lot of truth in me. I have a lot of is energy in me. I have a lot of like, it is what it is energy in me. And I ain't really sitting on that because I'm afraid that this person's going to be sad. But they don't care about me being sad when they hurt my feelings. They don't care about who they hurting to, hurting or lying to. They don't care about who they trying to control and manipulate. But I do care. That's why I don't like to control and manipulate. That's why I don't like to play fucking games with people. I don't I don't like emotional games. I don't like when I have to move a certain way. Like to me, I don't like secrecy is the cold bullshit. What is not supposed to be spoken about is not gonna be spoken about. Point blank period. But then it's something need to be spoken about. But somebody's like, nah, you can't say that because, you know, it might it might jeopardize what they got going on in a certain way or it might do this on that level. I hate when I got to move like that because I'm like, why we just can't be real? To me, that's how a lot of abuse happens in the community. I think about people doing all kind of spiritual or social club rituals, whether they be Masonic, fraternal, sorority, um, ancient ritual initiations done with certain religious groups and stuff like that. You doing these things. And then the fact of the matter is you doing this shit, right? You doing this shit. You doing these things with these people. You paying this money for this access, all kinds of things. But then ain't nobody talking about how ever since we did that ritual, I be wanting to eat little boy booty holes or I see blood and get turned on now or um, when I go to sleep now, I can't get up. I feel like I'm having body paralysis. There's a spectrum of things that happen when one does like, you know, like rituals and practices and demonstrations that in involve mental, emotional, psychodrama, chemistry, you know, kind of things. I know that thing I made that whole phrase up, but if you know what psychodrama is as a performance artist, you know, meaning the director is being an asshole to you, but the scene 
that is about to be shot or filmed or recorded is a scene that you got to be in a place so that the audience can be connected. It's like on some other stuff. So the director's being a whole dickhead pr promoting that atmosphere similar to the one that character would have to live in. When you do, when you get with a, man, I tell you, I've worked on some sets. I've worked on some sets. When you get the right director, the right creative team around you, you can create some powerful stuff when you know what you're doing. And I be seeing people who know what they're doing. Believe that. And I have an eye for it. So I, I know those who are using psychodrama, using trauma, um, MK Ultra tactics. Because a lot of these tactics, and I was talking about my therapist, you know, cognitive therapy. But we're going to get back there. Right now, I want to talk about, like, if you imagine if you know how to heal yourself, imagine what you can do to those who you see are not healed and how you can hurt them. And how you can play with your own healing. I don't like to play with my healing. So, yeah, Dr. Rose... That was her name, Doctor. Her name was literally Doctor Rose, and I remember I was like, because when I started therapy, I was pregnant. Things were already happening that were really fucked up, and I was having my second child, and I was not well. But I understood the psychology, I guess you could say, of when you're pregnant and how everyone is focused, hyper focused on the baby. That everybody wants to make sure the baby is good. The baby has stuff. Blah, blah, blah. The baby, the baby, the baby. For me, I was like, that means I can focus on myself. I can take care of me because everyone's focused on this baby. No one's focused on me. So I can focus on me. And I went to therapy and Dr. Rose, I said, I don't want to talk about my mother. And I don't want to be on medication. And we did cognitive. Because it, it, it was shocking to me that there's medication you can take. Yo, did y'all know, like... Not trying to down anyone's situation or anything like that. But, like, if you have a mental disorder, they will give you these medications. I love this picture. It keeps, like, drawing me in. <laughs> um, there is there is medications that you can take for your mind. I don't know the right term. Psych psychiatric, whatever, psychological. They will give you medication when you're pregnant. I'm not down for that. I ain't down for that. I don't agree with that. I don't know if that's a bad thing to say, a good thing, but I ain't a beneficial thing for other people. For me, that's a non, no. If I'm going to do drugs, I'm going to do drugs. <laughs> I'm not going to shortchange myself and be like, I'm not going to smoke a joint, but I'll take this medication that has all these things in there that we're not going to talk about right now. That's a whole nother video. And I'm pregnant too. So I was like, no, no drugs. And without. But also what I want to say about therapy is the reason why she was a good fit for me and what the reason why I tell other people to shop around when it's time for you to do ther therapy, ask questions about where they did their residency at, um, what do they specialize in, what do they love to do in therapy. When when she told me her answers, um, yeah, I interview my, I interview people. Like my, my, a lot of people who really know me, Know that I'm a very shrewd person. I'm a very detailed, very direct, upfront kind of person. I'm not always the most chipper, like, oh, my God. That happens a little bit when I'm nervous, and that happens when I'm in a really good mood. Those are the, I'm chipper when I'm in a good mood, and I'm chipper when I'm nervous. And when I'm also in a good mood, I could just be direct as all get out, you know? No, 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 how they say, no chaser. No sugar coating. When I'm sugar coating stuff, it's because I don't trust you. Point blank. If I'm sugar coating anything to anyone, I don't trust them. And I don't feel like they need a real answer from me. I don't think they're deserving of a real answer from me for whatever reason. And I leave it at that. So she took her residency, Dr. Rose, my therapist, my cognitive behavioral therapist. And I'm getting my certification in cognitive, cognitive behavioral um, sciences as well, so I can better help my my clients because I love the science. I love I love that type of therapy. I love how it helped me. And I'm like, how can I help other people with this? And with me being a, um, a coach and me being able to give wise counsel and me being a minister, I'm like, I want to be able to use all these titles to assist people in being themselves, being good to themselves. And so cognitive behavioral therapy saved my life. And I'm learning everything I can about it. 
short of becoming a uh, you know a whole counselor or a psychi- psychiatrist myself so that I could assist my clients and my my groups you know so so she took her residency in places like Haiti and places um I'm trying to remember I want to be accurate Haiti was one somewhere in Africa I believe and she had a knowledge of like people who are brown people and deal with spirituality as their religious base. Um, so she, at the time, I remember asking me, was I like Ifa and all these things? And I was like, no, I didn't even know anything about those things. And I was like, no. Um, I told I was just West Indian, raised as a Trinidadian. And then we got into a religious cult in the United States in America, of America, in Brooklyn, New York. And my life went on a certain trajectory. And now I was married to a man that thought it was okay to put his hands on me and abuse me in every way you could abuse someone except for yeah I don't think he never raped me or nothing so I never had no sexual abuse trauma from my ex-husband not at all quite the opposite if anything but as far as financial abuse mental abuse emotional abuse physical abuse yes and um yeah so and then you know growing up being emotionally neglected um being gaslit a lot, um, being put in situations that I should have never had to be put in as a child or as a young person or as a teenager and just doing the best I can and also not trying to demonize anyone. I think people don't understand with someone like me, when I talk what I talk about, you got to be honest with it. I ain't never come at people the way people say I come at them. I don't do that. If I did, we would be having problems for real. But just because I speak about a truth that I experienced with someone and they're not used to seeing themselves that way or they're not used to no one calling them to the table on their behavior, it doesn't mean I did a wrong thing. It doesn't mean I did a bad thing. And these are things I am learning. I didn't do a bad thing because I spoke the truth. Because I said, this is what happened. This is what I experienced. I didn't do a bad thing. Now, you know, you don't have to listen to it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't even have to believe it. You don't have to support it. But I can say what I got to say. So with that being said, I can also do what I want to do. And um, that burlesque video to upload that, that took everything. And that's not, and that's a new thing that I do just to be, you know, (laughs) That's a new thing. So it's still a little ashy, but that's okay. I'm excited. I'm excited about life. I'm looking forward to a lot of things. Spring is coming. So, you know, a lot of you um, who know me as Oya Gold, the owner of Gold Energy Management, we, I went on a winter hiatus so I could better serve my clients and my groups and my community. And um, we gearing back up. But, you know, I'm dealing with some internal changes. We transition as a family. Um, in a lot of different ways, in a lot of different ways. And I'm just, it's just me learning how to take things in stride and not take everything so personally. And so like, it's the end of the world. Cause it don't always be the end of the world. Just be the end of some bullshit, the end of an idea, the end of a journey, the end of a relationship, you know, and even really not the end, just the transforming of something into something else. So, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to being more personal. I miss getting on here and doing these types of videos. Like, I wanted, when I first came on, I didn't know what I wanted to do on YouTube because I do so much. I'm a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a healer. I'm a teacher. I'm a mom. I'm an entertainer. I'm a writer. I do so many things. <laughs> and I was like, how do I get this all out here without sounding like, Y'all remember coming to America and how the girl was like, um, so really I'm a pop star and like, but I want to, I'm also an actress and I really want to direct. I want to write my own movies. And I was, she was just going on and on and on. I see myself in her and I'd be like, Ugh. but I'm, I'm great at these things that I do. Um, so I just want to become greater in them and I want to be more intentional and I want to get it done. Like I have fun doing that thing. I have fun. So I want to do more projects. I have so many things that I want to do. And I have so many experiences that I've yet to have, even though I'm 40. And to me, I don't think 40 is old, but I think for most of my peers at 40, 
some of the experiences they've had, I haven't had yet. You know, for real, for real. I grew up in a cult. I think people don't understand when I say that. Like, I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't go to school for middle school. So it's a couple years there where I wasn't in traditional school setting. I wasn't living a traditional life. And then even after those two years of moving around within the cult, when we got more stable, we were still under that mindset. We were still under that doctrine, that programming. So, so yeah, so like, I'm healing still, and I'm realizing that more and more every day, and I want to talk about what it means to be a healer that is healing, you know, an actor that doesn't always want to act, that sometimes just wants to be, you know, mm. I'm not going to do that to myself right now because I can show dramatize up some tears by getting too deep in my own emotions. But I got to learn how to not run from my own emotions because they be deep, y'all. My emotions be so, so, so deep. And I just try to hide it. And I just try to control it. And I just try to, like, make it pretty or make it, you know, good for others. But sometimes that's not the point. And, um... I'm getting better at recognizing when that's not the point. And sometimes you just got to let those emotions be honestly what they are, which is present. So this is 41 minutes already. I ain't going to keep going on. I just wanted to spend a minute since I did an actual online journal about how I was feeling and where I was at and what's going on. I feel good. I feel purposeful. I just want more of it. And I want to be able to um, be surrounded by people who um, can support me. And I want to surround myself with people I can support. Because, to be honest, I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. And those tears won't fall because I've accepted that life is what you make it. <laughs> Life is what you created to be, and the stuff that you're not in control of, you have to learn how to accept it. You do have to learn how to say no to it. You do have to learn how to say, maybe I'll try it. It's a multifaceted experience. We're multi. We're all multifaceted beings, you know? So I'm just accepting my multifacetedness where I'm multifaceted at. <laughs> this felt good to do this. I have a lot of background conversation in my own mind. It's like, oh, you're rambling. Oh, you're not making sense. Uh, like that inner critic, you got to doubt the doubt, y'all. You got to doubt the doubt. When that doubt comes up and it's like, mm, you're doing that, you're like, mm, maybe. <laughs> and when I doubt the doubt personally, it gives me more energy. And I'm learning that. So if you don't take nothing away from this, whole video 43 minutes of me talking and journal, online journaling doubt the doubt doubt the doubt doubt the doubt and have fun with yourself that's that's all I got right now that's that's what's coming through for me on a personal level doubt the doubt and have fun with yourself and just saying that is making me want to cry. But I know those are tears of release. I did a big thing. I did a good thing for myself yesterday. And I'm going to continue to do big and good things for myself. Y'all stay up. Later. <laughs>